season. And the fifth overall of his Indy Racing League career. Starting outside the front row, Buddy Rice, the winner at Indianapolis, his third time in the front row this season. And there's your defending Menards Infinity Pro Champion. His best start of the year for Mark Taylor. Sam Hornish Jr. starts outside of row two. The third row on the inside, Thomas Schechter looking for a victory to go with that one he had a couple of years ago in Michigan. And outside the defending series champion, Scott Dixon, he won this race one year ago leading every lap. In row four on the inside is Brian Herta for the Andretti Green Team. And outside on a race-to-race -race basis, Vito Mira drives for the Ray Hall Letterman Team. In row five on the inside, it's Tora Takaki in the uh, Mo Nunn Pioneer entry. And Tony Kadan, who is the points leader, a two-time winner so far this season. There is Darren Manning starting inside of row six. And outside, Dario Franchitti. In the seventh row on the inside, Kasuka Matsura driving for uh, Panasonic and rookie Ed Carpenter, two rookies in row seven. In the eighth row on the inside, it's Alex Barron driving for the Red Bull Team Cheever entry. And outside, Adrian Fernandez, the driver and car owner of number five. He starts in 16th position. Row nine in his 88th IRL start is Scott Sharp, former champion, and Felipe Giafoni, a former rookie of the year. In the 10th row, Greg Ray, a former champion in the Indy Racing League from Plano, Texas. Outside, Dan Weldon, who's second in the point standings from Emberton, England. The 11th row is A.J. Foyt, Jr., and a former champion in Al Unser, Jr. Well, they could be worse for Dan Weldon. Of course, he could be where Al Unser, Jr. is. But uh, 20th place for Dan Weldon. Um, it can be done from back there, Christopher, but uh, and Paul, of course, but will it be done from there? It's hard here because it's such a short track, but uh, pit position, they could move him up. Well, as you can see, these are live pictures uh, from Virginia, from Richmond in Virginia. And we can cross, I think, now to our trackside commentators, Gary Lee and Larry Rice. There's a Mark Taylor looking back from his third uh, starting car. And there is Thomas Schechter. He'll be starting in fifth position. This is a good racetrack for him, too. There's Brian Herta. He'll be starting in seventh position. Scott Sharp. Actually, truly on board with Scott Sharp. You're actually yeah. looking. There's a tip of his nose inside his helmet. There's Darren Manning. Now, Marin Manning has the red helmet, and Scott Dixon has the blue helmet, so you can tell those two apart when we go to the uh, on-board shots. Yeah, Kenny Breck did test here for uh, Ray Hall Letterman, but uh, he was fast. He was under 16 seconds. He was one of the fastest guys that tested, but he didn't feel like physically he could handle it. He got tired after only about 15 laps, and uh, he knew he couldn't run 250 laps. They're saying now he could be back for the final two or three races of this season. Yeah, and it, it's hard to explain to anybody how you have to get in shape, how good a shape you have to be in. These guys are truly athletes, and they have to be in tremendous shape to manage to pull five Gs. Remember, they're going to do that for two hours and do it almost constantly. That just simply means that they are five times their weight in the cockpit. And, and what really is taxing is against the neck. Well, imagine try taking a bowling ball and trying to hold it, pull it up with your neck 250 times. I don't think you could do that. And that's exactly what these guys are having to do. Johnny Rutherford, the three-time Indianapolis 500 champion in the Chevrolet pickup uh, pace truck. Uh, they should get the green the next time by. So we'll see him pulling off as the uh, lights go off on the pace vehicle. These guys are going to have to use their heads, take it easy till it gets bent out a little bit because right now is a terrible time to have a crash. It's a good time to tear up half the field if you're not exactly. careful. Exactly. Well, there is the start, and side by side, look at Buddy Rice trying to get a jump, but uh, Elio takes the lead. Well, he finally gave in, let him go. Sam Horney stayed on the outside. He's one of the few that stayed on the outside down there through turns one and two. Taylor still rides in third. Hornish is fourth. Here comes Schechter looking to the inside. There goes Hornish to the inside. Oh, of the and he got the nose taken off on that car. Yeah, he thought better of it. Schechter now to the outside. Is he going to stay out there? Yeah, he does. Seems shifting gears oh, right there. They almost get together there. And he, uh, he, he can't maintain it coming off the corner. He had to get out of the throttle and let him go. Now that he's got company on the inside. That's Manning. No, that's uh, it's Scott Dixon that's on the Scott inside. Scott Dixon on the inside. Well, Scott Dixon got by Schechter once well, he here got comes Schechter on the oh, high side. Schechter there, almost loose. lost it. You can see him get loose. You can see him steering that car. He did a great job to save it as that thing wanted to go away on him. 
Man, and look at Kanan now on the high side of Dixon. Well, Kanan has really come on strong. He started deep in the field, and he's uh, worked his way up already. Kanan started back in 10th position. Man, oh, man. Now Schechter finally uses that high groove to get a nose out in front of Dixon. And Kanan's up to fifth and working on Taylor, so... Well, look at this battle right behind him, though. Dixon and Schechter side by side. Schechter's not giving up. If he stays up there long enough and gets a little rubber work on the outside of that groove, he may uh, be able to run up there where nobody else wants to run. That's where the brave dare not go. That's right. That's exactly Only, right. only Schechter and Hornish. There's Taylor, Kanan, Schechter, and That's Dixon. Dixon. Vito Mira right behind them. So those guys all running right in tandem. Oh, look at him work that steering wheel, oh. Barry. This, this is not, that's what I'm saying. Physically, this is a very tough place to run. Because he's working that thing. It's not just like turning the wheel and keep leaving your foot down all the way. They're, see, they're out, of, they're out of the throttle. They're shifting gears. So they're busy all the time out there. Kanata's has picked up five positions already. Weldon and Fernandez picking up four positions. But look at that. Masura Sharp losing five spots. Takagi's lost four spots. Oh, and there goes Kanan to the inside of Taylor, and he picks up, what, the fourth position. Yeah, he moved into fourth. As, uh, Taylor looked like he got uh, just got a little loose, moved way up the racetrack, and Kanan was right there to take advantage of it. And is currently in the 12th position after he started 16th. Well, he said he was very confident that he could move up, but he's moved up uh, several positions already, so that's a good job by Fernandez. And you talked about them being in traffic. We had a caution on the racetrack. A caution already on the racetrack. The first of the evening. Uh oh. Uh -oh. That's uh, Alex Barron, who's made contact with the wall over there in turn number two. So Alex Barron having trouble uh, over in turn number two. You can see he pancaked it with the right hand side of the car. So. We talked about that pit window, Larry, being 90 to 100 laps, but uh, we also emphasized that with this racetrack, there might be a number of yellows, and so that will uh, certainly change the pit windows uh, throughout the race. So the first of our yellows out early in the race for Alex Barron up against the outside wall. The emergency crew right there to help Alex out. He had a good race the last time out that uh, Chevrolet-powered entry for Red Bull Team Cheever, but uh, a short race for him this evening. Yeah, he, uh, whatever happened, looked like he just got uh, moved up the racetrack, got in there with the right-hand uh, side of the car. Tore off. Well, while we're under this yellow, we'll take an opportunity to take a short commercial break. We'll be back with the green flag in a moment. This is the SunTrust Indy Challenge. We're under a yellow at the moment, and this is the reason why. Alex Barron just being tripped up by Kazuki Matsura, the leading rookie in this series this year. It's only lap 12, and already the three-quarter mile circuit uh, catching these two guys out. Not a lot of room there at that kind of speed. No wheels that steer on my wagon, and Eddie Cheever's Chevrolet uh, causes the circuit painters another long trail of black line around the white uh, walls here. Uh, Paul Cherry, I think we're going to see a few more of these, aren't we? Yes, as I said, the trouble is here, it's very fast, very short. There's no room for error, at least at some of the other tracks. You've got a little bit of time to gather things up. Here you can't, you just run into people. 250 uh, laps of this track, Christopher. I've got to say that it looks a little bit like a kart track to me. There are your, uh, the order after 16 of the 250 laps. Of course, they are still circulating around this racetrack at the moment. and. Uh, we have now covered 16 laps in total. The yellow flag, well, we're about to see a green in just a little while, I believe. They'll get a bit of a wave on and uh, we'll know exactly what's going on. Uh, Christopher, I think we're going to see if it is a bit like a kart track compared with what we're used to, especially coming from Texas to this. Well, that's right. I mean, we've come from Indianapolis, then to Texas is night race, and then here to the three-quarter mile oval at Richmond. Look at it. It looks like a bowl, doesn't it? Well, I tell you what, um, it, it's quite an atmosphere inside those bowls. It's a bit like the NASCAR one at Bristol, Tennessee, which is unbelievable when you feel you're really crammed in and the atmosphere is tremendous. No, this is going to be a tight race. We've got a black flag then, Christopher. These are live pictures, of course. I don't know where these uh, black flags are coming from. Let's cross back to the track live and find out exactly what that black flag's doing out there. Well, 
once again under our first yellow of the evening for the Alex Barron crash after contact was made with Matsura. But we're still curious as why the uh, wishbone suspension broke in front of that car when it did not appear to have any contact. Contact was made with the left rear. You see Brian Howard has the yellow flag out. There's a look at uh, Castro Nevitz. Number 20 car of uh, Patrick Racing, Al Unser Jr. in the pits. Unser with a quick pit stop under this yellow. Made a slight adjustment to the uh, chassis and uh, he is away. Well, I'm not sure what uh, happened. They looked like they were just kind of looking that car over, but uh, went back on the racetrack. On the restart will be Castro Nevitz, Rice, Hornish, Kanan in fourth, Schechter is fifth now, then it's Dixon, Vito Mira is seventh, eighth is Mark Taylor, ninth is Frankiti, tenth is now Herta, then Eddie Carpenter, Fernandez, Takagi, Manning, Giafoni, Matsura, Foyt, Sharp, Weldon, and Ray will start in the top 20 positions. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Kanan, now he's made a pretty good move up through there. But I think now that he's caught the really fast guys, Castanevis, Rice, Hornish, those guys all three pretty quick. It's going to be a lot harder for him to get around them. Mark Taylor is back to eighth, so he has uh, lost several um, several spots here early in the going. I want to hear from Alex Barron if we can. Who was uninjured in that uh, in that single car crash that was triggered with contact with Matsura. Bumped in the inside, put me in the wall. Uh, really early in the race, really a shame because we had a really good car. I think we could have moved up a lot, so it's just a shame we couldn't get the Red Bull car up there. You know, Larry, have you, have you ever heard a driver get interviewed? They always say, it's too bad we had a really good car. Have yep. you ever heard a driver say, man, that thing was a tub of you-know-what? That, that thing was a terrible just race junk. car. It was junk. <laughs> Before the crash. Now, you'll never hear that. Now, but there's the car he had contact with, so we'll watch Mansura to see if he had, did any damage to his car because he hit with the right front of his car. Look Checker at Schechter. still Checker. on the high side of Kanan on this restart. And look at Hornish, he's on the outside. He's trying to make that second groove out there work. And still stays on the high side, and here comes Schechter. Boy, Schechter's just flirting with disaster out there. He's always working that wheel. It looks, he gets in the corner so hard, he just can't get off the corner. Look, look at him. that, Hornish got around Rice. The Penske cars are one, two. Hornish made that outside groove work, and that's uh, something we've seen him do Time after time, year after year, he really can make the outside work when nobody else seems to be able to. Look at Schechter again on the high side of Kanan. And right there, that coming off of turn two is the toughest place on the racetrack because it flattens off so much, and he stayed on the outside there, so he's going to make the pass, which he did. Come, if you can see on the outside coming off of two, or that transition from the banking to flat, it's very critical and it's very easy to crash right there. Well, Schechter won two years ago at the Michigan 500 has not found victory lane since then. He has led the most laps of, of a driver that has not won since that victory up there. In fact, he won, he led the most laps at Indianapolis two years ago as a rookie before crashing. And look at the Penske wow. cars. Now the gap closes down between first and second, but in doing so, they open up a gap over third place, Buddy Rice, and fourth is Schechter, fifth is Kanad. Yeah, they've opened up a pretty good uh, half a straightaway lead on everybody else as uh, Hornish has just chased down Castro Nevis. Hornish looks like he wants to lead for a while. Yeah, he's really, really chasing down. I mean, he's caught him pretty quickly. And he's got a lot, down his back straightaway especially, it looked like he had a lot more straightaway speed, which means simply that he's getting off of turn two a little better. Looking on lap 28 already, Castro Nevis has led all 27 circuits. He will lead circuit 28. But man, he's being pressured on the high side on his left side by his teammate. Well, and those, uh, the spotters right now are telling him what's going on. I mean, he's telling Castro Nevis he's on the, he's on the outside, 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 because certainly the uh, captain doesn't want his two cars crashing into each other. That would not be a good thing. Well, these two uh, fought it out. Well, we understand now from uh, timing and scoring from race control, there might be a stop and go penalty. Here it is for Mitsura right here. And that is for the contact with Barron. 
Well, they felt like the contact was uh, Matsura's fault. Uh, you know, that I'm sure that Baron thought it was his fault. I bet if you ask Matsura right now, he thinks that was an unjust penalty. Uh, but, you know, that's uh, they. The IRL does have a lot of cameras, a lot of different angles. They can look at that thing in, uh, over and over and over again. Obviously, they felt like he pushed up into the Baron and caused that crash. Before we talked about that little stop and go penalty, I was about to say that uh, these two Penske drivers fought it out for the lead and then the win at Homestead. And right now, they're up in front and about to close in a little owl. Yeah, it took them 34 laps to catch the lap. But we had a yellow, I, though. I, we yeah, had a yellow, That's though. right. So it's taken them a little while longer than I thought, but uh, Al Unser Jr. really struggling big time. He's just... Uh, not getting around the racetrack at all. Castroneves opens up a little bit right there during traffic. Well, we saw that lead open up as we were watching that stop and go penalty. He pulls up behind Scott Sharp, the former co-rookie or co-champion of this league back in 1996. There's Greg Ray, the Access Motorsports number 13, the blue car. Now you're right on board with Scott Sharp. Yeah, remember we go, and you can see right there, Hornish, Hornish goes by. on by on the inside, so the leader's now. And Scott Sharp knew he was there. He got out of the throttle early, gave you Let plenty of room on the bottom side. Didn't want to get in the way. That was a very good gesture on his part. So from here on out, you're going to see these guys in traffic. Kanan took a look to the inside of Rice as okay. they're stacked up behind the uh, number 20 of, of the uh, Al Unser entry. Yeah. Schechter's moved into third. Rice is back to fourth. Kanan in fifth. Oh! Look at this, a squeeze play on the high side. We're going to have a lead change side by side to the corner, and yeah. Well, I think Castro Nevis right there thought, man, my my uh, teammate wants that lead a lot worse than I do at this point in the race. I think I'm going to let him go. Well, Hornish, uh, after winning the opening race Ooh. of the season, uh, has had his struggles for sure. Now, there's Schechter. He's uh, trying to chase down the two leaders and appears to be doing so just a little bit as they're in traffic. Hornish has finished 15th, 19th, 26th, and then the last outing finished 4th. So uh, after a promising start, he struggled a bit so far this season. Heavy traffic all the way around this racetrack. You see Brian Howard with that move over fly. He's just kind of waving it. <laughs> he's going to get goes by. He's going to get real tired of waving that thing before the night's over. Believe me, because he's going to get a workout. There's going to be plenty of lap cars in everybody's way out there. As uh, Castro Nevis, once Hornish got around him, he's fallen back a few car lengths, but he's uh, he's not that far behind. And I think he's content to run here in second place at least for now. So Sam Hornish did something no other Penske driver ever did. He won in his debut. And that's saying a lot when you look at the list of who's who in yeah. motorsports, the drivers that have driven for Roger Penske. And he passed his teammate to do that. So and I'm, so I'm sure that, uh, you know, nobody wants to win worse than Sam Hornish does. Uh, Castro Nevis, he hated to lose that race, but he had to lose it. Nobody he'd rather lose it to than his teammate. Herta is back in ninth position. You're looking back over his rear wing to the uh, tenth position car. That's the number five of uh, Fernandez. Yeah, so Fernandez has gained a couple more spots. Uh, right now, though, looks like he's stuck uh, just about back here in that tenth spot. Hadn't moved up much since then. There's a 55 at Masura after he made that uh, stop and go penalty. He's back in 20th position. He is following Frank Keaty. He did not qualify at all well yesterday. No, and Frank Keaty is not running very well either. He's uh, he's near the back of the pack and really struggling here on this little uh, tight bull ring type racetrack. Well, here's a kid that is overdue for a victory. The most exciting youngster from Cape Town, South Africa. This is Thomas Schechter. He, you know, his driving style, everything about him is very similar to Sam Hornish except he doesn't have the wins. And he's with the same team that Sam found so much success with, uh, the Penzo Panther organization. Sam Hornish pulls up on the rear wing of A.J. Foyt to put him a lap down, followed by Casper Evans, Schechter, Rice, Kanan, and Dixon. Well, and here you can see Schechter. He's coming up on that lap traffic. That's uh, Giafoni. Goes by him on the low side. We can give you a great, great view from the cockpit. There's no way we can show you or make you feel 
the, the pressures. The, on it those is, drivers. that's right. The, the feeling inside that race car, the pressures you're under, the G forces you're under, the feeling of speed, there's just no way to transmit it. That's the one thing you cannot do in motorsports is give everybody the feel of just how much at risk these guys are at every at every moment. Look at this, your leaders are nose to tail through traffic. They go by Unser again. They've cleared Foyt. Yeah, and Schechter's catching up too. He's right there. See, he's the third car back there, the yellow car. So he, uh, the traffic has allowed him to catch up, and he's way up there. He's three wide, and uh, again. He lost some ground there, Boy, too. Well, he sure did. You can see the thing got loose on him, and he had to get out of the throttle. And that's... Uh, uh, look at this. Oh, look how close they were in front of him. That's Foyt in the green and white car, and Unser in the red car. Yeah, those two guys raced each other is just exactly what he does not need. Yeah, he's losing some ground now in that uh, second place yeah, car. You can see, you you can see, see right Casper here. Nevitz, but watch how high he gets. Watch right here. He's this, up in the gray stuff. Yeah, he got way up there in the gray stuff, and uh, he really had to save it there that one time. And that was a very dangerous place to be on that racetrack. The marbles could have sucked him right in the wall. There's Takagi in number 12, Weldon in number 26, and the two Penske cars. Yeah, once again, dealing with lap traffic. Look how much ground Schechter lost, though, when uh, A.J. Foyt and Alan Jr. were running side by side. He lost a whole straightaway to these guys. Working on lap 53 now, the 250 scheduled. Well, these, they're, these guys have not, uh, didn't come in on that first yellow flag, so... And from this point on, if there is a yellow flag, all these guys will make a pit. If not, uh, you know, they might run another 40 or 50 laps before they start making green flag pit stops. We don't have another yellow. This will be a real fast race. There goes Kanan to the inside, and he uh, gets around the number 15 through lap traffic. Kanan and uh, Rice having a little go out there, but Kanan gets by as they were going by the lap car of Al Jr. Yeah, Buddy Rice went to the inside. Kanan went to the outside, and he had the momentum to beat uh, Rice into the corner, so uh, he took that position. Well, this is a track where you're watching out in front, you're watching your mirrors, you're listening for your spotter. These guys just have to be totally wiped out when this race is you're over. You're just so busy yeah, all the so time. so drained. Look at Mira, now he goes by on the inside. Herder Manning running side by side. Fernandez and Mira right behind now. Mira. Look at a three wide. Just battles. Herder goes down the middle and made a three wide. Well, they talk about rubbing being racing in NASCAR. These guys can't rub on each other, and they're so much faster than the NASCAR races here. Well, There's yeah. Herta again to the inside of Mira. Again, this Mira situation is, he does not have a contract with Ray Hall Letterman. This is a race-by-race -race deal that they have. Yeah, he just, uh, you know, if he messes up or if he loses the ride, he's just gone. And he's really slowed down for some reason. Matsura is in for a pit stop, green flag pit stop. But something's wrong with Mira. He's lost several spots here in the last few laps and has moved uh, back towards the back of the pack. He was uh, well, he's showing eighth right now. Yeah, and he's lost at least two spots right here. Well, Fernandez is up to seventh. What a great ride for Adrian. And there again, the Penske cars are still 1-2. First 36 laps were led by Castro and Evitz. Then on lap 37, Hornish took the lead. Three points are available for the driver that leads the most laps in an event. Look at this, Sam Hornish lapping Dan Weldon. That's something that's uh, not happened very often this season. Because well, Weldon right now has uh, led the second most laps, and he's second the point standing. So after 62 laps, Hornish continues to be the leader. The SunTrust Indy Challenge continues in uh, Richmond, Virginia, but we are under our second yellow at the moment, and this is the reason why. Uh, Brian Herter tapped Darren Manning and uh, debris on the track at the moment so they're going to go and take a little bit of a look out of what's going on we can take another look at it here and uh, well, there it is just a little bit of a nudge on that front wing that's enough to uh, rearrange his aerodynamics Paul's got his hand in the air I should say uh, rather Christopher's got his hand in the air yes Chris no the point being that um, the reason the debris on the track is that uh, this is the first time this year that the g-force teams have used little end plates oh, you on, to get on the front wing plug in, that's what you're telling yeah, me why not yes <laughs> but no there are little end plates on the front wing which you, if you remember at indianapolis on the higher speed tracks you've got very very thin little front wings here they've got in order to get the downforce they've got quite big plates and what got clipped there was the quite big plate well it yeah. doesn't and that's lying around on the track so it's now the opportunity for everybody to do regular servicing under yellow. 
Marlboro Penske. And look at the tires. Look at the blistering on that left rear of Tony Kanaan. Well, this new pavement, we said that they didn't have any trouble with the tires, but maybe they had tire was blistering. Yes, it was. You're right. So maybe that is going to be a problem. Uh, they're allowed seven sets of tires for the for the weekend. Uh, of course, they've used a couple of them up, so they probably each one got maybe four sets or five sets left, and now then either three or four sets left. Well, and that was 70 laps, but not all of that was uh, green flag racing. We had long yellow for the uh, Alex Barron crash. It's a lot of tire abuse that we saw on that left rear. But keep in mind, at the line, look at this, and it was Hornish. Wow. Castron Evans had a great pit stop, almost beat him out, but uh, <laughs> that's one of the things about having that advantage. You thought this was oval track racing. This is drag <laughs> racing out of the pits. Of course, there's a pit speed limit in there. If you go over 60 miles an hour, you get penalized, so they have to stay But if your pits are down toward the pit exit, you can drag race out. Exactly. It's a, it is an advantage to be down there at the end of the pit area, no question about it. So Now, let's talk about the Kanan tire situation, because we saw how hard he charged early on. That could be a factor in the tire wear. Well, it, it puts some be. additional pressure and abuse on that tire early on. Yeah, it certainly could, and it, uh, we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out from here. We still have emergency vehicles on the racetrack, uh, so what we thought would be a very short debris yellow turns out to be a little longer than we anticipated. Yeah, it is a little bit longer. Uh, Fernandez uh, is up to sixth after that pit stop, so he had a very good pit stop, moved up a couple more spots, so uh, Fernandez we thought might be a little overconfident some of the things he said before the race but obviously he's backing it up now as he's come a long way through this field you know i am reminded larry when a lot of the uh, european uh, formula one drivers came to the indianapolis motor speedway back in the, the 60s they didn't like the constant speed they didn't like the walls now can you imagine these guys that come from a road racing background on, on a racetrack like this yeah like fernandez yeah i mean what a great it, job he's doing yeah this this racetrack is is intimidating i mean it's fast the walls are very close uh there's not a lot of room for error and it uh it can bite you it can jump up and catch you real quick only two leaders so far this evening. Elio Castro Nevitz, after winning his first pole of the year yesterday in qualifying, led the first 36 laps. Then his teammate Sam Hornish took over on lap 37. We have just completed 74 laps under yellow. And after that pit stop, you saw Hornish just edge Castro Nevitz out of the pits to maintain the lead. And so we will expect these other cars to uh, move past the pace car. Pace car will pick up the leader for the restart. So Sam Hornish under yellow on the restart order will have the lead over his teammate. Schechter is third, Kanan fourth, then Rice and Fernandez. Well, Fernandez has come a long way from the back. Uh, 16, 16 spots. Six. So he's uh, he's gained a lot of spots. He gained two spots on that pit stop. So not only is he doing a good job at the pit. Uh, the pit crew doing a great job, too, because they got him out of there very, very quickly on that last one. Well, and tip your hat, too, because he's also the team owner. And yes, that's a tough position to be in, to be the driver and the owner. Yeah, it, it's not done a lot in this series because it's so difficult to do. Eddie Cheever tried it for a while. Uh, he quite honestly wasn't very successful at it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, you have so many things to think about. Uh, Michael Andretti, he tried to do it for a while. But, uh, a lot on your plate. A lot on your plate. So many things to think driver. about. Uh, you know, besides that, you know, if you crash it, you got to pay for it. You don't like to do that very much. Again, this started out to be a debris yellow. I'm not sure what the debris was, what the nature of the debris was, and it's turned out to be a longer yellow than we had anticipated. It came out on lap 68. We've gone uh, about eight laps now under yellow. Yeah. Um, the safety car is still out there. I think they must be looking for something. They've driven around there a couple of times, especially down there in turns three and four, looking for something, and maybe they finally found it. Will this track with the new surface change as much as Texas changed two weeks ago when the, when the sun goes down? Uh, it will because the, the, the blackness of it. The blacker it is, the more heat it absorbs. So when the sun goes down, it will that uh, it'll get a lot cooler so it should change quite a bit when the uh, when the sun goes down and there's no more the sun's not heating that black asphalt 
the green flag the next time out. So you're saying we should see on this next pit stop perhaps a lot of uh, wing adjustments. Yeah, some of these guys are going to have to make some adjustments uh, once that uh, sun goes down. They, the racetrack is probably going to get a little looser than it has been. Okay, we should have the green this next time by as Hornish continues to lead his teammate. And it's Schechter, Kanan, and Rice on the restart as they complete lap 79. Doesn't look like Schechter got a very good start there. Well, Rice didn't either. Or no, that was uh, Matsura that was yeah, back. Yeah, Matsura is the car behind him. Lap. So Schechter now in third position. Kanan is fourth. Rice fifth. Fernandez sixth. And it's Dixon, Herta, Manning, and Vito Mira back in tenth position. Good start for Hornish. Well, Hornish is uh, pretty much on the mark. He's uh, he's done everything pretty well right. Tony Kanan, Buddy Rice now looking like he's right back after Tony Kanan after that last pit stop. He goes to the inside, and he's got the uh, inside path. And he takes that position away from Kanan. So, Kanan. so he, he moves, moves up a spot. He moves to fourth. Now the lap car of Matsura, that uh, kind of pink and blue, is right between third place Schechter and fourth place Rice. And now look at Fernandez. He's staying right with Kanan. He hasn't lost any ground back there. But Matt Sura seems to be running just as fast as the guys up front. He, uh, after. Sura, of course, had that stop and go penalty, which put him back. A yeah, stop and go penalty. Then he made another pit stop under the green. So he's probably a he's couple of laps, laps back. He's four laps off yeah. the pace right now, back in 20th position. But yeah. he's running as fast as the leaders. Yeah, a green flag pit stop will do that to you. It'll it'll cost you a couple of laps anyway on a very, very short racetrack like this. Plus he had that stop and go penalty for what altercation he was involved with uh, with Be Alex Barron. Right. Put Barron in the fence. Thomas Schechter still hanging on to third. He has not been able to close in on Castro Nevitz, who's in second. Dan Weldon still back there around uh, near the back of the pack. Now only nine drivers, Larry, on the lead lap. Uh, Darren Manning is in ninth position. Now keep in mind, though, with that yellow, uh, that alleviated some lapping at that point. Yeah, Greg Ray's moved up from 19th up to 14th, but he's still... Uh, lap off the pace. Yeah, still lap off the pace, but, uh, you know, if you get running really good, you can get that lap back. You use your pit stop just right. And uh, he looks like he's uh, looks like he was a little loose right there. The back end of that thing wiggling around a little bit. He's working on the rear of. Oh, they're wiggled again. Got sharp. There's Manning and Herta. Those two guys already run into each other once. And remember that uh, Manning is uh, was warned. Manning quite hit. Sternly. Manning, Manning hit everything at Texas with the pace car. He certainly did. He had a terrible night. Now then we'll see as he gets by Herta this time. But uh, they already made one contact here tonight. You don't want to have too many that was chances. Battle. That was the battle for uh, seventh position. You can hear he's on the rev limiter down there. You can hear that engine hitting the rev limiter. He right, pulls up behind the Purex car and goes by Felipe Giafoni. That's the car that is actually co-owned by Robbie Buell, who had been the driver but retired from competition right before the month of May. Yeah, Tor Takagi's running around the inside of the racetrack. He's got a problem, and he's, uh, he's way off the pace, it seemed like, because he was down there on the inside of the racetrack. 12 looks like he uh, is having some problems. Yeah, that was uh, Takagi, and he's really slow now. Everybody's going around him inside, outside. You can tell that last time when they were going around him that he's uh, engine problem, something's going wrong, transmission trouble because... Right went by, there's... Frankiti, there's Weldon. Here comes Ed Carpenter. You're really just a moving chicane when you're that slow out there with, on this kind of a racetrack. This racetrack. He's showing him the black flag. Yeah. The left. This racetrack is way too fast, way too congested, way too much going on out there. Has somebody running that slow. There's Herda back in the ninth position. There goes Mira around Giafoni. Giafoni having. Uh, a bad night too. He's uh, not running very, very well either. 14 degree banking in the corners. Went straight away, relatively flat. There's AJ to the left of your screen. In the middle is Frank Keedy. Yeah, we're looking at Eddie Carpenter. Or that was the 24 car of Giafoni. 
Yeah, we're looking back there in the uh, position 16th, 17th, 18th, back in that area. For those guys. There's one boy with Herta as we work lap number 96 of the scheduled 250. Yeah, Herta actually had the best qualifying time of any of the Andretti Green uh, cars here tonight. Uh, has had a very consistent run. Hasn't been able to challenge for the lead, but he has been very consistent in the top ten all night long. Well, I'll tell you what, they're not off the throttle very long, are they? No. No, you're, you're pretty much on the throttle the whole time. You get out just a little bit getting in, and then both corners, and that's it. You're out and right back in it. Give it a little uh, burp, we call it. Back up in front. There's the gap between first and second. Yeah, just uh, a few car lengths. And Here Thomas comes Schechter. Yeah, Schechter's been able to hang right there with him. He fell back about uh, 10, 12 car lengths, and he's just kind of ridden right at that distance. Well, so. Schechter had to clear some traffic. Right. There's the Once he did that. Rice is having a good uh, run back there. There's the number two of Taylor, the number 11 of Kanan. Yeah, Kanan uh, having a little trouble getting around Taylor. He's going to lose some ground to Rice. Look like. Looked like he had just caught Rice, but now then he's fallen back. More contact on the racetrack. I think we got a replay here. Watch this. Well, this is Fernandez and uh, Manning. Man, Manning is going to end up, if he keeps doing this, he's going to end up crashing well, that car. They're going to find him for sure. They'll have another little set down with Mr. Manning because he was just into everybody in Texas. And he's made some contact this evening. And he's just incredibly lucky not to have been crashed uh, out of Texas. When you hit like that, you're going to climb over a wheel and get upside down if you're not careful. He's done that a couple of times. Oh, 100 laps now complete. Peter's got so close, and now there may be a problem, and there's a yellow on the racetrack. Yeah, I think he might have got out and just barely touched the wall there. Those guys ran four abreast down the front straightaway as the Castroneves tried to get under Hornish. And uh, Hornish just wasn't going to give in. Man, oh man. And I think Greg Ray, uh, they went around him. He got uh, up in the loose stuff. I think he just went up and might have. I think he had to slow down to catch his breath. Yeah, I probably did. I think he might have touched the wall over there coming off a of two, though. Although I don't see any white marks on his tires, so maybe not. Well, the observers are calling debris on the racetrack. Well, he just must have got high and uh, scared us and him, I guess. Be right along with Darren Manning. Uh, probably scared himself several times in the last couple of races. He certainly scared me a couple of times already tonight. Now watch this. Watch this. And that's a <laughs> this, was, or this was earlier. This was. Man, oh man, huh? He's made contact with what, three or four guys so far this evening? Yeah. We're going to get him a stock car ride. <laughs> He'd be good in NASCAR. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that was an earlier shot. I think this that might have been uh, another incident. Very well, that's the second time he's got yeah. that right front yeah, wing I think hit. Yeah, it is. By Herta. By Herta, because that was coming off of turn number two, that one was. So. Let's put it this way. If this were a paintball game, he has shot everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see now. Pit stops. Everybody coming back into the pits. And I would think they'll have to make one more pit stop yeah, before this race is over. Well, they they may. But they may be able to squeeze it out if they have another yellow or two. I don't think so. Yeah, if they have another yellow, I suppose. 13 laps of 250, I think they'll have to stop one more time. There's a quick stop for Schechter. Remember, he's on one clear at one end. See, there are the Penske cars, and oh, he looks like he Schechter might. Schechter picked up a position. Yeah, I think Schechter picked up a position that time. So. There's Herta. Oh, and he almost got hit by Fernandez, then almost got hit by Unser. Boy, that's. Uh, that was an eventful pit stop. Yeah, and that was not. A, he had a very bad position to be in right there. He tried to get out, missed the guy in front of him, and then missed the guy who's going by, and uh, he didn't hit anybody. But boy, it was close. A couple of them came real close to him. Saw a good pit stop, though, for the uh, Pendulum Panther team. Well, they're, they've been pretty good at pit stops their whole career since they got into the sport. Uh, that was no exception. They got in and out very quickly. It looked like Schechter picked up a position on the pit stop. But now we're showing... Scoring is showing Frank Keating. Yeah. 
as the leader because Franchini did not stop. Well, Schechter... Uh, this sort through here. Yeah, all the leaders came in. It appears. Race control is reporting raindrops and Franchitti is shown as the leader. Race control reporting some raindrops. Now, keep in mind that 126 laps is a completed wow. race. Wow. We've gone 114 right now. So if if they go another 10 laps, 12 it laps, it could be a completed race. And it rains, they could call it a complete race and he would win by virtue of not making a pit stop when everybody else did. Ed Carpenter stayed out too, so he's in second place. So, wow, what a turn of events that would be. Wow. Now, right before that stop, both Penske cars were complaining of understeer, which is a, a pushing condition. Right, so they're, they probably... Europe, they say understeer, oversteer. In America, we're talking about push or loose. Right, and they, they probably made some uh, adjustments, adjustments as far as tire pressure or maybe a little wing adjustment in order to... Uh, Look at that, Castro Nevitz. Yeah, Castro Nevitz won the battle out, and Hornish, Hornish had trouble getting out of the pits for whatever reason. I don't know what happened, but, but uh, Castro Nevitz went by him, and so did Schechter. So uh, Hornish lost a couple of spots, two spots to be exact, uh, on that pit stop. Well, what rain has been reported is ever so light look at the fans and uh, I don't see a lot of action from them. Now it doesn't appear that it's uh, that it's real heavy so hopefully it'll just be a passing shower and go on and we can get it's this thing going. It's not even called a shower. Yeah, just a, a few sprinkle. raindrops. Right. A drop here or there. Right, right. A couple of drops. A couple of drops. Maybe it just fell a couple of drops on the, on the one observer. That's right. Well, you're at lap 115. Takes 126 complete race. Yeah. So Frank Keeney's playing the odds, has the lead. Carpenter, remember, he, they can go probably to lap one. Watch this. Here's the action of the pits. As Castro Nevis goes by, and there goes Schechter by. See, Schechter, for some reason, I don't mean uh, Schechter, I mean Hornish, for some reason, didn't get out of the pits very quickly. I'm not sure what happened, but when he uh, when he pulled back out, he just didn't get up to speed as quickly as the other guys did and uh, ended up losing two spots. So on this restart, it'll be Franchitti, Carpenter, Castro Nevitz, Schechter, Hornish, then Manning, then Fernandez, Kanan, Herta, Dixon, Rice, Mira, Weldon. Well, they're showing Weldon back on the lead lap. Then, uh, so we're showing 13 cars on the lead lap. Sharp in 14th position. The first driver a lap off the pace. So there is Castro Nevitz restarting in the third position. Well, there's a look at Pancho Carter. Yeah. Who is the spotter for Thomas, Thomas Schechter. And, uh, he's, of course, former... Uh, Indy Driver won the pole at Indianapolis, won a lot of championships. 74 ships. Rookie of the Year at Indianapolis. There's a look at the uh, sky. Back on board with Darren Manning. And you can see that it's broken clouds. It's not a like a real ominous black everywhere. It's not what we had at Indianapolis no. in May. No, it's uh, some broken clouds. There's a dark cloud here and there, but it doesn't appear anything that's going to be uh, threatening to stop the race. Showing now 120 laps complete, uh, 130 to go if we go the distance. But uh, with the threat of rain maybe increasing now, a completed race would be 126 laps or halfway. Right. So there's a look at Dario Franchitti. Of course, Franchitti is probably the only guy on the racetrack that's hoping that it does start raining right now because uh, it'd be his uh, chance to get a victory here. And of course, I imagine Ed Carpenter wouldn't mind that all that much. As he uh, led one lap at Indianapolis and uh, 28 laps at Texas. So before today's race, he led 29 circuits. They remain under yellow, the third yellow of the evening. From Richmond International Raceway, the restart order showing Frankini Carpenter they did not make a pit stop as the rest did. Castro Nevitz and Schechter.
getting Hornish out of the pits. Then Hornish and then uh, Darren Manning. So <laughs> despite all the bumping and banging. There you can see a few well, raindrops Hornish. that are uh -huh. falling. And it's uh, just enough that uh, they can't throw the green. Uh, it's not hasn't really affected the racetrack yet. Hard enough to throw the red. Right. So, and if, obviously the longer they leave the race, if they leave the race cars out there, those hot tires and the hot engines and everything help keep the racetrack. Uh, circulates the air. Uh, circulates the, the air, keeps, it helps keep the racetrack dry. Once you pull them off, uh, then it's gonna get wet a lot quicker. So until it really gets a lot wetter than this, they're gonna leave those race cars out there and give them a chance to keep this racetrack dry. Ominous broken clouds above as you look off the back of Thomas Schechter's car presently in fourth position. And now 123 laps are complete. Well, we talked earlier about Thomas Schechter and how similar he was in driving style and so forth with Sam Hornish and how the big difference is he just doesn't have the victories that Sam Hornish has got. He's uh he, that one year at Indianapolis, uh, what wasn't meant for a very slight error on his part to put him in the wall. He would have won it as he a rookie. Yeah, he would have won it his rookie year. He his, had a uh, great mom run. always puts a group together. His mom, Pam, puts a group of his friends and relatives together to watch these races live in Cape Town. And I got him in trouble last year by saying he had that motorcycle. <laughs> and his mom called him up and asked him about it. Well, I'm happy to report he no longer has the motorcycle. He sold the motorcycle. Hey, we want to say hi to Ivan and Christine Junovich down in Auckland, New Zealand. While well, we got a little time here, they're big fans who watch us every time uh, the IRL's on. Are they the ones that invited us this winter to come down and, and yeah. spend uh, a couple weeks down there? On down, they said. <laughs> well, Southern Hemisphere, our winter will be their summer down there. It'll be nice and warm down there. Exactly right. It's we can, time to go. We can avoid the uh, Indianapolis uh, Midwestern winter. 125 laps complete, working on what would be halfway. The next time by would be a completed race if, in fact, we got a, a heavy downpour that prevented them from drying the track and completing this race. There's one of Scott Dixon. Uh, not having a good day. He now, led every lap here last year, but uh, started fifth and presently is in 10th position. It's kind of hard to imagine that a guy who had everything going his way last year couldn't do anything wrong. He's really struggled this year. He led three laps all season this year. Those were at Homestead, first race of the year. Let's watch the rear of number 27. I saw some very definite smoke in the back of that car. Well, we'll see. They made. Uh, I saw the same thing you saw, and I don't know whether it was ran through something. That, I didn't see him putting oil dry down, but there was something coming out of the back of that car. You're exactly right. Okay, so we're going to restart after a brief sprinkle. Lap 130 about to be completed after our third yellow. And Frankiti is our third leader of this race. Casper and Evans led the first 36 laps. Then uh, Hornish led from lap 37 through 114. And Hornish is on the prowl already looking for a way to get around Thomas Schechter. Oh! Hang on, hang on. And there went Manning. Manning. Manning finally got the fence. We say that only because of all the contact that he has had over the last two races. You yeah. go back and tap the fence again because he's lost the steering, he's lost the brakes. Yeah, once you hit the wall like that, the brakes are gone, and uh, you're just kind of along for the ride. So if that's you know, I'm wondering if that right front wing finally gave out on him. It's been hit twice, and I'm not sure they've changed it in a pit stop. We never saw that. No, he may be driving that thing back into the pits. I thought, uh, I thought it was just rolling, but he's still got that thing under power, and he's going to drive it back into the pits. Won't do him much good because they're not going to fix that thing. But twice we've seen that right front wing get hit, yeah. both times by the number seven of Perda. Well, he, he went to the outside there. I think he just get, went to the high side, got wide, uh, just got it loose, and uh, once it got loose, uh, he couldn't save it anymore. You know, he, he tried to steer it down he tried to keep it off the wall but it just wouldn't turn and he got there he hit it hard enough that he's bent the whole right let's see right here now you, you, he was on the bottom of the racetrack I thought he was high but you're right he was on the bottom of the racetrack and it just got something, loose on something him. caused the handling to go away he was yeah. way down low yeah he was way down low and uh, once it once it went up high he just couldn't get it bring it back down again so 
Yes. So you wonder if he left more debris out there by driving around the racetrack than having it stopped up there <laughs> against the wall. Under our fourth yellow of the evening here at Richmond. So Dario Franchitti will again lead on the restart with Ed Carpenter in second as the uh, crew takes a look at the front of the race car and they'll jack it up and take it back to the hauler and not make any attempt to repair it here this evening. Yeah, not much chance of fixing that thing. The right front's they're gonna, they're gonna nickname bad. him the pinball wizard. Boy. He's he's like he's like he's like the pinball. He certainly made a lot of contact the last two races. I uh, it's hard to believe that he hasn't uh, crashed. Oh look at this Rice and Mira in on this and Rice very slow getting out. Well this is lap uh, what 134. May she go well. Uh, with a yellow or two, Rice might be able to make it to the end. I don't know. That would be a very interesting scenario if he could. Because uh, obviously everybody else is going to have to make at least one more pit stop. And uh, maybe that was his thinking. As you see, they're still trying to uh, police the pit area. But Manning and Scott his teammate Dixon comes Scott in Dixon too. comes in for his pit stop. Under yellow, and he is underway. Well, it will be interesting, Mr. Rice, if they can go the distance. If this if this race stays under green, it'll be very difficult, I think, to go the distance. Yeah, it will be if it stays under green. 114 laps. You know, these guys are just playing on. Scott Dixon knows uh, the way he's running. He's not. He doesn't have a chance to win, so he's going to play the odds, try to get off sequ sequence on his pit stop. Top five finish, maybe. And, yeah, and maybe uh, use it to his advantage, and that's. That's smart on their part. You know, if you don't think you've got a winning car, you've got to use some other strategies to try to win the race. Well, on the restart, Franchitti will be your leader with rookie Ed Carpenter in second, then uh, Castro Nevitz, Schechter, Hornish, and Fernandez. Let's go right down to uh, catch Darren Manning if we can before we go back to green. They just checked me and, uh, me and Sam up. Sam got out of it. He got a big sideways, and I was down. Sam. And uh, just got a big sideways and then pushed up into the marble. So uh, just a shame, really. A team target and Toyota was doing such a great job. We were up, we had probably the fastest car out there, you know. So just a shame the last few races have just finished this way, you know. Just uh, you take some chances and uh, you get other people making mistakes that uh, the race. All right, there and there. I, I would like to have. I'd like to hold that tape <laughs> for the rest of the season. On the restart, on the break. Looks like Carpenter made his pit stop for in depth because he's no longer in second place. So uh, now that Franchitti leads, and look at Hornish trying to get under Schechter. Schechter's not going to give up that position very easily. Well, you got two of the bravest guys out there right now yep. battling for position. Both these guys are young, they're talented, they're tough they're good in traffic and uh, right now it looks like though Hornish is going to be the guy that comes out on top so he gets down to the inside going in oh Schechter doesn't give up that easy he stays right on the outside it looks like he's hung on to it he stayed on the outside all through one and two and uh, Hornish could not make the pass here he comes again exactly the same scenario we saw the last time let's see if he, he makes it work this time no yeah yep. Thomas yep. finally got out of the throttle so Franchitti continues to lead this thing over Castro and Evans. And uh, Castro's uh, teammate, Hornish, and then Schechter. Well, I tell you what, Thomas Schechter did a great job hanging on to second. Hornish, though, quite honestly, seems to have had the fastest race car here all night long. Uh, he's, uh, whenever he's fallen back, he's been able to get back up front uh, in a fairly quick fashion. Thomas Schechter probably has got the second or third fastest car here right now. They're going to have to do a little more adjusting on it during the next pit stop if they want to win this race. Working on lap 145 of the scheduled 250. There are the leaders in the gap between the two. Franchitti did not make that stop. When everybody else made the stop, he assumed the lead. And on the restart, had the lead, but then uh, Carpenter came in and made his stop. Yeah, so he's, uh, it'll be interesting to see. He can probably go to about one, 170 
uh, in that area before he has to make a pit but, stop. But by not making that pit stop then, getting out of sequence, if the yellow comes out now, he comes in with everybody else, he's exactly. right back out in the lead. Exactly. That, and that's exactly what he's betting on. That's the There's reason There's Carpenter right there. Carpenter made that stop. He had been second. He's about to go a lap down. Yep, that's, uh, you know, strategy is a big part of this game. You've got to, you've got to use uh, your pit stops and strategy to your advantage. And on a short track like this, Frank Keaty's crew knew that the only way he had a chance to get back in the front was to uh, go, get off sequence. And you're right, if, they all, if there's another yellow, they all come in, he's right on sequence with everybody else. Carpenter came in just at the end of that yellow and went from second to 12th. Yeah, he, uh, I'm not sure, not sure why they did that. He was in a pretty good position. He had nothing to lose, really, by staying out there and trying to stay up in the front of the pack. Actually, he is a lap off the pace. Timing and scoring showing Ed Carpenter now a lap off the pace. So he's about to go two laps down. Well, uh, it's interesting to see how this plays out because if Franchitti ends up in the first top five and Carpenter uh, doesn't, then it'll uh, certainly show us that his Carpenter strategy was not nearly as good as Frank Edis. Well, I'm not sure when Carpenter made his earlier stop compared to Frank Edy. He may have had no recourse but to make the stop. He may have oh, been that, too low on too. fuel. That's true, too. And there he goes by the inside, so that will likely put him down. And Frank Edy is doing a great job. I mean, he's holding off, uh, he's holding off three of the guys, the three guys that have been the fastest all night long. I mean, the, the uh, Penske cars and Schechter have consistently been the three fastest race cars on the racetrack all night long. And right now, they can't catch Frank Keaton. Well, we were concerned earlier, uh, before that restart, about some what we thought was smoke from the back of Frank Keaton's car. But apparently, that was... Uh, yeah, it must have been something on the racetrack. Anyway. Yeah, it must have been something on the racetrack that he ran over and just looked like smoke because it's never seen it again. Might have been down in the dust on the inside of the racetrack. Uh, right before the green flag came out. Right along with Thomas Schechter. Back in fourth position. Sam Hornish is third, then Casper Nevitz. And your leader again is Frankiti. Frankiti uh, took the lead on lap 115 when the uh, the yellow came out. The leaders pitted, he did not. And assumed the top spot on lap 115. Only three leaders so far today, Casper Nevitz, Hornish, and Frankiti. There's Fernandez. Now he's running in sixth position and uh, started way, way back near the back of the uh, the run, back in 16th spot. So he's done a great job moving up. And look at uh, Frank Gady. He's just kind of walking away from everybody right now. The one thing you have to remember, though, is he does have a lighter fuel load. Those guys filled it up. He's probably uh, running about half a tank or a little less right now. So he has uh, probably 100 pounds less fuel than those guys have. There's Dario's father, George Franchitti, watching the action. The Scotsman out in front. He lives now, well, his, his family home is back in Scotland. He lives outside Nashville, Tennessee with uh, Ashley Judd. There's oh, Herta, look to the inside, and he goes by Fernandez for position. So Herta moves up to sixth. Fernandez drops to seven. So all of a sudden, Team Green Driver's starting to get racy here. And there's a look at uh, Mark Taylor. Mark Taylor. Mark Taylor's uh, well back right now in 17th position. Trust Indy Challenge from Richmond in Virginia. Round six of the Indy Racing League, and it's the Scotsman, Dario Franchitti, that's leading. He doesn't, uh, you know, he can't run much over 100 laps, I wouldn't think. Scott Dixon is already a lap off the pace and looks to be ready to go two laps down. Well, Scott Dixon went in, he made a late pit stop. He may be playing the odds and hoping with another yellow he can make it to the end without a pit stop. So, uh, different still, strategy. If, he, if he's two laps down, it's, it's no. tough. True. If, if the pit stops are under yellow, he has no chance. If they're, if they're under green, uh, he might have a shot. Takagi now is... Uh, out of the uh, race. Wow. He was very, very slow. That was a replay, and he's climbed out. Yeah. He's been running very slow for the last uh, 15 or 20 laps. We mentioned that uh, the last time we saw him on the racetrack. Extremely, extremely slow. 
finally decide just to give it up. Look at Franchitti now. On the outside of Dixon going into one. Man, that didn't look very hard at all. He followed him for about three laps before he decided to do that. And look how heavy the traffic is in front of him. Goes by Matsura on the inside. Now he has A.J. Point out in front of him. Inside, outside. He worked those guys pretty easily, it looked like. Scott Dixon right in the middle of uh, Matsura and is that Herta behind him or is that that's, that's Carpenter. That Carpenter? That's Carpenter behind him. Now then here comes the two Penske cars, Castro and Evans and Hornish. Hornish trying to find a way around the outside of his teammate. Back up in front with Frank Keedy working on lap 175. 75 laps to go. Well, right now, there's Tony Kanaan right out in front of Hornish. Yeah, so Hornish really on the move as Kanaan uh, is he a lap down? He's got to be a lap down. Well, here's here's Schechter. Let's take a re look at a replay. Ooh. Hornish got very high and had a backpedal, and there goes Kanan by. That's why Kanan's by him. I didn't think Kanan could have been a lap down, but uh, couldn't figure out how he got by him. Well, that's exactly why I missed that. He got way up there, kept it under control, but was way out in the marbles and lucky to keep it under control, quite honestly. Says, here comes Hornish again. I gave it to you. I'm going to take, take it back. It back. And make it look relatively easy. Yeah, he did. Yeah, once he got out there, he just uh, went right on around Kanan. Now he pulls up on the rear of Schechter. Schechter in third. Your leader is still Frankini. Then Castro Nevitz, then Schechter, then Kanan, then Hornish. Herta is sixth. Fernandez is seventh. Then Weldon, Mira, Rice. And those ten are on the lead lap. Then a lap down is Ed Carpenter. That's Dixon right in front of Schechter. And Schechter uh, would like to make short work of him so he can, uh, because if he holds him up, it cause Castro Nevis, uh, could give Castro Nevis a chance to get around him. Well, let's correct what I just said. Actually, uh, I think there's seven drivers on the lead lap. Well, look at this. There goes Hornish by Dixon. So, uh, And look at this, here he comes by Schechter. Boy, he gets a great run off of turn number two. There's no question that he can, uh, he gets off of turn number two better than anybody. Well, right now the fastest driver on the racetrack is Hornish in number six, a slight bobble there by Schechter. That's A.J. Foyt, the uh, lower right of your uh, screen there. No, that's the uh, number 11, the uh, uh, big gulp of Tony Kanaan. Look back from Schechter to Kanan. Yeah, so Schechter right now hanging on. He's in fourth, uh, having, um, you know, run, having a good run, but just not able to know. Whatever, looks like Cornish got in trouble again and got wide. And uh, Schechter goes back around him again. Now working on lap 184. So it's still Frank Keedy. Now we're hearing from the pit area. Uh-oh, oh, look at this. On the inside, there goes Harnish. Almost contact. Wow. Oh, they got so close. Harnish, Harnish got way wide again and let Schechter get around him. And, uh, oh, look, look at Kanan now. Now we're hearing from the pit lane that Frankini will pit in about 10 laps. Well, that's not un unexpected. He, uh, he was going to have to make another pit stop. And I... I quite honestly thought he might have to make it before now, so. But as you said, uh, they, they play the odds. That was the only chance they had to get up there at the top of the. Uh, Look at this. Schechter cereal. goes back to the inside of Hornish. Oh! Oh, contact, oh. and there goes Hornish to the wall. Hornish, oh, he slides in between a couple of cars. Almost contact again. Man, oh, man. That time, Schechter just barely touched him as they went through that corner. Now, can there be damage to Schechter's car? Yeah, and was there any damage to uh, Hornish's, Hornish's car? Or did he car? just uh, loop it? Yeah, I think he barely touched the inside wall when he got in there, but I don't think he touched the outside wall as he 
turn that thing around. He's probably going to lose a lap. Or more. Or more. Yeah, he's well, he's already lost one lap, so it's going to put him pretty much out of the running. But I think he's wanting these guys to get him turned around so he can get restarted. But you have to wonder if there's damage to uh, Schechter's number four. Arnish, a couple of different times, had got wide and given the guys a chance to get around under him. And he got, uh, that's what happened again. He got a little bit loose up there, gave uh, Schechter the bottom side of the racetrack. Schechter took it, but this time, you know. Well, let's watch again, Larry. Contact between Schechter in four and Hornish in six. Hornish just kept coming down. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to tell, but it didn't appear. It didn't appear that Schechter moved his line in. It didn't appear that Schechter moved his line in. I was well, watching. Look at this. Look at this. Whoa. He slides right down between them. Very lucky right there. But let's take another look at it, see if we can see. But if you watch the inside tires, they stayed pretty much pretty close to that inside. He might have come up a little bit, but uh, Hornish slight, was Slight contact yeah. right there on the uh, right front. Let's watch again. Now watch the line. Well, you can't see it from this angle. You can't see if Schechter moves at all, but, but it see, does not appear that Schechter moved much boy, off that line. And, you know, that's one of those things that is so hard to tell. I, I'm sure if you're Schechter, you think he came down. If you're Hornish, you think he came up. Uh, and on a racetrack like this, it's what you call... One of racing. those racing racing, racing. That's just racing. That's right. That's There's the uh, captain. It's the sort of thing that's just going to happen. You can see there was just barely contact made with the side pod. He's wanting to get going, and I'm yeah. not sure what happened there. And then he, uh, you know, and once Schechter got out of the throttle, once he hit the side pod, that's when he hit the left rear tire because the tires stick out farther than the side pods do. And when he got out of the throttle, that's when uh, that's when the tire hit, and that's when oh, the spun. pits are open. The pits are open. This could be the great advantage that uh, Mr. Franchitti needed. Well, it might be. Could it could be the victory for Franchitti right here? Wow, what a lucky break for him. It was time for him to make his pit stop anyway. We're on lap 192 now. There's Schechter underway. Now Schechter and the rest of these guys can shortstop. They don't have to take on a full load of fuel. Franchitti probably will have to take on more fuel, so let's see what happens there. I think that was Franchitti that beat him out, though. Yeah, but I don't think Castro Nevitz stopped, did he? I did not see Castro Nevitz down there. Well, now Hornish is back underway. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think Castro Nevis can make it to the end without another pit stop. I might be wrong. Well, Dario Franchitti got the yellow that he needed to make that pit stop. And we'll sort things through here under this yellow as we get the uh, feedback from timing and scoring. Wow. There's Hornish. There's Ashley, Ashley Judd. Judd. There's Dario's dad. And there's Roger Penske. Well, now we're showing Dan Weldon as the leader on lap 194. I think Frank Keaty was going back up there uh, the side of Hornish for some reason. I'm not sure why. Here comes Hornish. Well, they're going to come in and at least look at the tires and make sure everything's on there and see if they see anything bent before they send him back out. Yeah, he's four laps off the pace now. Yeah. So he, after that win, has really struggled. He finished fourth the last outing, but beyond that, he has really struggled. Uh, this season well, after he won at Homestead. Hornish has finished 15th, 19th, 26th, and was fourth the last outing two weeks ago. And now he'll be four laps off the pace, but we'll be able to uh, resume uh, when we go back to racing after this uh, yellow period. Hornish returns to the pit area in the uh, 16th position back to the attention. There's the uh, look at the Schechter brain trust right there. Now they're going to work on the uh, front wing. The nose comes off. A new wing will go on. Yeah, he must have uh, damaged that wing when he hit the wall out there, so they decided to go ahead and put the new front wing on it. Well, when you're four laps down, you got, you know, one Nothing to lose yeah. at this point. Exactly. 16th position, four laps off the pace. Dan Weldon, Vito Mira now is in second. Buddy Rice third. Frank Kedi is fourth. 
and then it's Castro Nevin. So let's see if Frank Keedy has something for him now after this pit stop. Well, I think that Buddy Rice might be able to make it to the end. He pitted uh, very late. He pitted on 134, I think it was, or 135, around in there. And with these yellow flags, you know, can he run 115 laps? Could be. We'll find out. Our fourth leader of the evening, Dan Weldon. The winner at Motegi. He is second in point standings. Castro Nevitz led for the pole position the first 32 circuits. Then Sam Hornish, his teammate, took over on lap 37 through 114. And Dario Franchitti from 115 to 192. And Dan Weldon on this pit stop assumed the top spot. Yeah, I'm not Weldon did not qualify at all well. In fact, he started back in 20th position, so he has steadily worked his way uh, through the field with some good pit stops. Well, and once again, you know, probably pit strategy. He's got nothing to lose by staying out there, trying to lead the race, trying to, you know, get some advantage by using some pit strategy because he has not run all that well. Not sure why we're showing uh, this car up in front. Well, he'll, he'll go around. It's Taylor, but they're saying the green the next time by. So, Weldon, Mira, Rice, Frankini on the restart. Live coverage from Richmond International Raceway. A 1.2 kilometer racetrack. And there is a look at the Klein Tools number 26. Part of the Andretti Green Stable, and that is Dan Weldon. There's the pit out. There See, there goes Frank Keaty. I think the real well, Rice is right there. It's Schechter Canon. 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 Yeah, Schechter just barely beat Canon out. Well, I'm wondering, though, if they're going to. They're going to have to put Mark Taylor back. Well, he's, oh, he's yeah, passed. Yeah, See, he's yeah. passed the pace car. That's, they always let, let uh, the leader of the race is always the car right behind the pace car when they throw the green flag. There's never any lap cars at the front of the uh, field, and I think that's a good policy. I think they've done the right thing there. Look at that. Just did miss Hornish. That is Scott Dixon. Once again, here is oh, Herda. Look at this. Herda, where's he oh. going to go? See, Herda just uh, he made the right choice at the right time. It's an instantaneous choice at the speeds those guys are running. Uh, he saw him heading for the inside. He got on the brakes and went to the outside. A 12 lap yellow. We're about to go back to green as they'll complete lap 200. We'll have 50 laps of racing here in Richmond. We'll be off to Kansas next week on July 4th on Sunday afternoon. Vito Mira is in second position. In a position for his best finish ever. Buddy Rice better. Oh, he's going to lose that spot. Castro Nevis went around. Buddy Rice. Rice got he did trapped not, in behind Greg Well, Ray. he made it had a little indecision right there. Decided to stay down to the inside and Castro Nevis there was no indecision in his mind. He went right to the outside and blew them both away. Blue Hill and Frank Keaty both off. Okay, up in front, Weldon in a position to win his second race of the year. This will be the fourth win for Andretti Green. Ganon has won twice. If Castro Nevis wins this race, he just won it with that pass right there because while both Frank Keaty and Buddy Rice were down there trying to decide which way to go to get around that lap car, Castro Nevis just went to the outside and won around both of them. Absolutely a quick move, a brave move, and the right move as it turned out. Well, we talked earlier about Vito Mira having a race to race deal with Ray Hall Letterman. A second place finish could uh, solidify the rest of this season. That's right. Uh, I believe, though, I got to believe that he's going to have to make a pit stop. I think Weldon will have to make a pit stop before this is all over. So, uh, Remains to be seen if they can run. But again, team. again, if the yellow comes out, they all fit together. Yep, yep. We'll see. They maybe they. Um, I I'm not sure exactly what the last time was that Weldon pitted, so he may be able to stretch it out. They're willing to gamble, many anyway. We'll find out. Well, it all depends laps. on yellows. It all depends on yellows. We've had five yellows so far this evening, and four different leaders. Vito Mira very quick as he's following Weldon around there. So, Schechter was a big loser back there. He's fallen back to ninth spot. So, for whatever reason, Thomas Schechter uh, 
not running very well after that last pit stop. If Carpenter got back on the lead lap during that last yellow, as did Scott Dixon. Now Scott Sharp in 12th is the uh, first driver not on the lead lap. There's a good look at Vito Mira. Lost part of last season with a broken wrist. So he got his arm out of a cast last year. He jumped on a go-kart right away and went karting to, to get his strength back in his, in his wrist. Well, being four laps down is not bothering Sam Lawrence very much. He still tries to run on the outside of Herta and uh, gain that spot. Herta is in seventh position, so they're not actually battling for a position there because, like you say, Sam's four laps off the pace, but he's still running the high, high groove. Not a whole lot of room up there, but he's, oh, look how close they got. Look how close those people got. Man, I don't know. You know, when you're four laps down, I'm not sure it's worth taking those kind of risks uh, to try to get around the guy. Get around him is it's self-satisfaction, but it's nothing more than that. Back up in front, there's the gap between first and second. Officially, it's about uh, three tenths of a second. Only about track, about 10 and 12 car lengths. Yeah, not not very many car lengths. Here back. comes Castro Nevis, though. He's beginning to apply the pressure to the back of Vito Mira. Yeah, Castro Nevis uh, has been one of the quicker cars all night long. Right now is no different, and he will get up there, and apply the pressure. I'm sure. Again, you're looking back at the sixth car of Sam Hornish. We're after contact with Thomas Schechter in a long tow back to the pit area, lost four laps to the leaders. That's right Fernandez. now he is just as fast. Yeah, and that's Fernandez back there behind Hornish. He's an eighth, and Schechter in the yellow car back there in ninth. Those cars all uh, running for a position. Of course, Hornish is not. Hornish, the last lap, was the fastest driver on the racetrack. Not a surprise. As he, uh, he's been very quick all, all night long, even with that slight brushing of the wall down on the inside after he spun, uh, didn't seem to bother the handling on that race car, and he's still extremely quick. The last lap, Dan Weldon was the quickest, and uh, Hornish was second fast, despite running right behind the number seven of Herta. We'll see. Front. Now you have Mark Taylor out in front of your leaders. He stays to the high side. Weldon goes by. This is lap 218. Vito Mira, the second spot. So both these guys with an excellent chance to win this race, all depending on their uh, how long they can go without making a pit stop. Michael Andretti pacing the, the pit area. Yep. I'm sure he's. Uh, kind of walking between car to car to see uh, what the fuel situation is in each one of his cars and what they have to do to get to the end. Well, he has a car leading. He has a car back in fifth position. He has a car in seventh position. There's Castro Navis, still running very strong third place. Yes, let's, let's recap that, recapitulate just a bit. Andretti Green now with the leader they have fifth place, sixth place, and seventh place for the top seven. And they didn't qualify all that well. No, they didn't. They qualified uh, most, well, Weldon. Poorly, actually. Yeah. Weldon was way in the back. Well, Weldon started back in uh, 20th position. He's used, he's used the pit stops. Frank Keaty was in 12th. And he's used the pit stops to his advantage, which he should have. Now he's going to have oh, the yellow flag. Yeah, yellow flag. I, I thought he was pulling into the pits, but it was for a yellow flag. Looks like uh, Taylor. Mark Taylor is one of the cars. There's another car appears to be up uh, up the racetrack a little further. It is. It's Fran Keaty. Uh-oh. Fran Keaty and Taylor made contact, obviously, when Fran Keaty was trying to lap him. Remember that Mark Taylor was the first car lap, and we saw Mira and Weldon get around him. Castanevas obviously got around, but then Fran Keaty had a problem. And he's uh, very frustrated. You can see the little hand motions there. Saying, what in the heck are you doing, boy? Well, Frank Keaty's car apparently is not damaged. He wants to get refired. Wants that toe to get that car going again. Yeah. He's, that's he's exactly. Saying, come on, come on. Uh-oh, uh -oh. this Schechter. Well, we said Schechter had fallen out. back. We said Schechter had fallen way back. He was back to ninth. He'd been running in the top three all night long, obviously. 
the problem is terminal as he's pulled in. So, man, a lot of changes happening right here in the last uh, well, we're on 50 lap laps of this 224 race. 224 right now. We'll have 25 laps to go when they cross the start finish line as Thomas Schechter walks away. Yeah, very, Still very trying upset. Trying to get uh, the 27 car going. Yeah, tough break for Chef Schechter. Tough break for Frank Gady, too. Now, these guys don't have onboard starters, say, like uh, NASCAR. Let's well, watch again. Here's a replay. Yep. Again, one of those situations where you couldn't tell. Oh, and those cars almost got together right behind them. Did you see the other two? Oh, look, I think Schechter did get into somebody. Watch, watch the back of your screen. The yellow car? Yep. And right as it goes past, right there. Right there. Right there yep. is the contact to yep. put him out. That was that was Fernandez and Schechter that now made the contact. Here you're riding along with Taylor. There goes Rice, and there's the contact with Frankiti. You notice exactly what Taylor did. He yep. got both hands off the steering wheel, yep. brought the arms back toward his chest. And look at Schechter here. He's, Here's the he's, contact right there. Uh, broke the left front. Look at the left front corner. Broke the left front upright. Now you're on board with Herta. Here's the contact right there, the initial contact. Look at Herta. Oh, and he oh, almost man. gets together with his teammate on the left side. See, and that's how quickly things happen. Man, oh, man. Taylor's still taking some time climbing out. And there's a look at Schechter. And uh, the SunTrust Indy Challenge will come to an end. We will, we'll, of course, go with that live in just a moment. But first, we want to have a quick chat here in the studio. Still with us, Paul Cherry and Christopher Tate, of course. Um, well, it's all happening, isn't it? Our six yellow there. We find people all over the track. Try and uh, decipher this one for me, if you like. Um, a difference of opinion here in... Uh, well, we'll call it pit lane at Sky Sports because um, Mark uh, looked like Mark Taylor looked to me like he was dropping down on Dario Franchitti, and Franchitti didn't have much room. But Paul, will you take a slightly different view. Do you want to well, amend your view? Or? Not yet. No. <laughs> I think uh, you know Mark obviously was on the higher side. Dario was trying to nip underneath him, but if you watch Mark now, he is turning in on the line, so to speak. He's let that car go through, and he came down, and Dario's just got up behind him. Well, that wasn't all of it, was it? Because then Sam Hornish got into uh, Fernandez, and here we are. Hornish, uh, it all happens. Fernandez comes up the track, and poor old Hornish has uh, nowhere much to go except back we'll, into pit uh, lane with a bent front left. We'll call Hornish uh, Schechter for this evening, if that's oh, all right. Oh, shall we do that? Sorry, yes, it was, of course. Um, <laughs> yellow cars and Sam Hornish Jr., you see. It all goes together for me. Schechter, it is. <laughs> it is getting late. Um, Mark Taylor, then. We decide that uh, it was his best qualifying run of the uh, of his life. He'd obviously but, uh, had a, he'd obviously had a problem, Keith, for uh, some number of laps with a handling problem as he was dropping further and further back, and it may be that that was what forced him to take a rather different line to what, everybody else. If I can interrupt you right there, we can hear from Thomas Schechter now and actually get the lowdown on what happened with him and Fernandez. Let's hear if we. Can. He just got caught in in a yellow, and uh, some two cars touch each other, and. I was on the brakes and hit someone. Another unfortunate result. Uh, I have to thank Penzoil and Chevrolet. Uh, they really needed a good result, and we looked like we had the car to do it. But you know, we'll come back next race. Real quick, take us back to what happened with you and Hornish. We were going side by. We we're having a great race, going side by side, inside, outside, and we we're passing each other. And then, I think one of the times he went around the outside, I, I thought I was right down on the yellow line. We touched. Um, that's what happens when you race that, that close, uh, you know, a little bit of running. Well, we figured that uh, Hornish was not at fault as far as, uh, was at fault, I should say, rather than Schechter. We can go back now uh, to our green flag because we're in the closing stages of this race and uh, we will join our commentators back at trackside. Probably do now because of all the old flag laps. We'll go back to racing as they complete lap 233, 17 laps to go. Let's see what Vito Mira has for him. Let's see what Castro Nevitz has for him. Well, you can bet if there's anything left, they're going to turn it up now because this is just a 17-lap dash to the end. There's no holding back from now on. And it appears like Castro Nevitz is uh, struggling to keep up. His buddy Rice challenges him on the inside. They almost get together. Wow. That's Scott Sharp out in front of them, who's a lap off the pace. And here comes uh, in the mix, but four laps down is the number six of Hornish. Well, 
Castroneves finally won the battle, but uh, Rice gave him one heck of a shot on the inside. That Just took away run. probably any chance he had at running down your two leaders. There's Kanan on the back of his teammate Herta. That's the battle for fifth spot. Yeah, those two guys battling pretty hard with each other. Still back up in front. There's the gap between first and second. Wow, we talked about Dan Weldon, how poorly he qualified, how poorly he ran all, all weekend long, how poorly he thought his car was handling. And when it comes down to the end, they use the right strategy and put themselves in the position to win this race. How many times though, have we seen uh, Roger Penske do this, that he's won a race for his driver yeah. with pit strategy? Absolutely. Vitor Mira the same way. He was not in the top three most of the evening, but down here near the end, when it counts, he's right there. Lap 238 now complete, working lap 239, right along with Scott Sharp. Sharp is uh, three laps off the pace, back in 10th position. Well, Mira's uh, right now doing everything he can, trying to find a way to catch Weldon, but Weldon appears to have enough speed to hold him off, as he they're both pulling slightly away from Cash and Ellis. So, Dan Weldon and Vito Mira, with very good pitch strategy, appears are gonna bring home the victory. Depending on where Tony Kanaan finishes, uh, Dan Weldon could, in fact, uh, take over the top spot this evening. He was 35 points behind Tony Kanaan. Well, and it's, it's just another reason that you never give up in auto racing. You never say, well, this is just a bad weekend. Let's go out there and ride. Dan Weldon didn't do that. His crew didn't do that. His team didn't do that. And therefore, they have a shot to win this race. And right now, it looks like Castro Nevis all of a sudden Look turned at the this. Whip Here's Castro Nevis. After having trouble getting by the lap car earlier, he has really closed down on. He's pedaling real hard right now. Yeah, he's holding his breath and going for everything he's got right now. Up on the rear wing of Vito Mira on lap 243. Seven laps to go. He might get Mira, but I don't think he can get by Weldon. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Is a yellow coming out? That is Eddie Carpenter, very, very slow on the high side. Will this bring out the yellow? Or can he get that thing off the racetrack? Can he get it off the racetrack? Oh, I just don't. Get down now. No. Doesn't have time. I mean, they're spread out all the way to the right. Yep, there's the yellow. Just not going to be able to do it. Tough break. And that should seal the fate right there. Yeah, I don't see well, how. Maybe, maybe if there's no debris and he just, he's back under power apparently. I think he's hit the, I believe he brushed the wall. It looked like white tire marks on the side of that thing to me. Like he got up and. Uh, Let's take a look again. Oh, there's two of them. Three goes, wide. Yeah, three wide. He goes uh, to the Greg Ray. Well, maybe he didn't. I thought he got up and but remember what happened that last race when there was some contact and he stayed out there and ended up hitting the fence this may just be a precaution he wants to make sure that car is all right yeah there's michael michael i wonder if he's worried about the fuel or just worried about being worried <laughs> well, we could have a two-lap dash here what are they going to do what are they going to do one lap to go at the line. Well, they're gonna have a one lap shootout. One lap shootout. Let's see how uh, brave Hornish is, or I mean, Castro Nevis is. They'll get the green the next time. They'll get the green the next time by. Green and white. They'll have one lap to go. The green and the white will come out together. Well. I don't believe anybody's going to get around him, but look at Harnish, I mean, Castro Nevis. Nevis. Look at Castro Nevis. There's the white flag, the green flag, one lap to go. There goes Castro Nevis. He gets by Vito Mira. And he's pedaling real hard down the back straight away for Dan Weldon. Now, well, not going to get it done. Dan Weldon. Weldon's going to win it. Castro Nevis comes back to take second. Vito Mira is third and so Weldon picks up his second victory of the season in the fourth
for Andretti Green. Well, you got to give those guys a lot of credit. That was uh, a lot of strategy. I guess we were wrong on that deal. What a night it turns out to be then. Dan Weldon of Great Britain comes from 20th place on the grid to win the SunTrust Indy Challenge in Virginia. And that is a remarkable outcome for Team Andretti Green and celebrations for the 26 car. This is Dan Weldon from Emberton near Olney in Buckinghamshire. A fantastic night then. They'll be dancing around the clock tower there, that's for certain. So Dan Weldon then takes his second win of the year and a well-deserved win it was too. So that's it then from all of us here on Sky Sports for round six of the Indy Racing League. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.